Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Ward. This video segment will describe the anatomy of the distal radio ulnar joint. We'll go over the pathology of the joint and the design rationale for the aptus arthroplasty. This is a model of a right forearm. It's as if you're looking at my forearm from back to front. The forearm is composed of two bones, the radius and the ulna. So in actual fact, the ulna stays fixed and the radius spins around it. This is normal forearm rotation. It's almost like a propeller where the ulna serves as the hub of the propeller and the radius is the blade. So you can see normal rotation is the radius spinning around the ulna. This is the normal situation. Anatomically, the distal radial ulnar joint is composed of the sigmoid notch of the distal radius and the ulnar pole. So the ulnar pole is fully covered with cartilage and the sigmoid notch rotates around the ulnar pole. So you can see during lifting, load across the radius loads the sigmoid notch and the ulnar pole. This creates an extreme amount of force in this area. So it's this area that wears out, becomes arthritic as a result. Traditional surgical treatment of this condition consisted of resection of the distal ulna, which was called the DARA procedure, or the matched distal ulnar resection. This removed the distal ulnar pole that was arthritic, but the problem is that it destabilized the distal radio ulnar joint. So the thing that happened is that you got convergence of the radius relative to the ulna and instability so that the ulna would move too much relative to the radius. This made it difficult for patients to function if they were high demand patients. So replacements of the past consisted of removal of the distal ulna alone with replacement or unipolar replacements, but this produced metal on bone articulation, which often was painful. Dr. Shecker's design consists of a plate that's attached to the radius with a metal ulnar stem going down the center of the ulna, a polyethylene ball that allows an articulation between the ulnar stem and the radial plate. This produces a constrained implant that eliminates the problem of convergence and instability. So you can see that as this rotates, there's no instability of the ulna. The ulna can't migrate dorsally, and there's no convergence between the ulna and the radius. Here's another view of the aptus arthroplasty, a view from the dorsal aspect. You can see how this addresses the instability in arthritis. The procedure attaches the plate to the radius in the sigmoid notch, removes the ulnar pole, replaces it with a stem coming down the shaft of the ulna, attaches this polyethylene ball that you see here, which is enclosed by this cap that's attached to the radial plate with two screws. This is constrained implant fully capturing the ulna and you can see how this eliminates that instability of the ulna and eliminates the convergence between the ulna and the radius. You can see with rotation how the implant keeps the ulna separated from the radius and keeps the ulna from moving relative to the radius. On the left, you see a normal lateral view x-ray of the distal radial ulnar joint. On the right, the abnormal dorsally subluxated ulna with the bow that you can see with the red arrow. The ulna has slid out of joint. There's been an attempt at a soft tissue stabilization which failed to stabilize her joint. Some people have tried a hemiarthroplasty, which is a replacement of just the ulna, leaving the radius intact. Unfortunately, in many patients, this metal on bone contact erodes into the distal radius, and you can see by the circle the erosion of the implant. 
This is a demonstration of the dramatic instability between the ulna and the radius, the positive piano key sign. This increased abnormal motion leads to wear and arthritis of that distal radioulnar joint. Here's another patient showing instability of that distal radioulnar joint. You can see how the ulna slides out of joint and reduces with palmar pressure. Here's that same patient six weeks after aptus arthroplasty. You can see the patient's regained ability to turn palm up and palm down. In order to find a surgeon with experience with the aptus arthroplasty, go to the aptus medical website at www.aptusmedical.com. When you get to this page, in the upper right hand corner, select find a doctor and you can select one who is located in your geographic area.